Hey kid, I saw your video and I just want to say um, great ability to reason. Um, it's a trait that's dying fast. Um, never lose your objectivity. Good job. Um, don't don't let people get you down. That's what they try to do, especially people who have no evidence. They just throw things at you and scream and yell and make themselves look like asses. But anyway, um, I'm a geologist by education and trade, and I'm going to try to tell you some things that, other than what you said, which is true, other things that are a little more critical. Say so this is the Earth, okay? And here we have the continents. We'll just do this, you know, okay. This is the earth. This is the present water level, okay. And as you can see, it nowhere near floods the continents. And even if all the ice caps on the planet melted, sea level only raised about 300 feet. It's not going to drown the highest mountains on the planet, okay. So where'd the water come from? Problem number one. Well, even if there was some magical miracle poof and everything did get covered, the original volume of water would obviously have to increase to cover the rest. Something like three to four times the present volume. Okay, so now this water's magically poofed, appeared. Well, when it's over, where does it go? Well, we'll just say for the sake of argument, it poofed away again. Okay, well, that leaves another problem. We have, you know, the planet is surrounded by an atmosphere. Okay, now when you flood the planet beyond the tops of the mountains you run into a problem you can't push just simply push the atmosphere out of the way if you do this you will basically bring it closer to the edge of the planet gravity would be weaker it's higher up and adding three to four volumes of water wouldn't significantly add to the gravity of the planet so you would have to essentially thin the atmosphere to keep it so that particles don't begin to be lost to space but in by thinning it from where it was, you have to increase the pressure dramatically. So we run into the problem of this little boat floating around the planet, do 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 do, but nobody on it can breathe because they can't fill their lungs with air. Okay, so you know we'll say poof, whatever. That problem was magically everybody grew gills or whatever. Okay, and uh, that problem was in, in the water magically disappeared. Now there's something else. If there was a great flood, and you kind of touch on this, the planet would be covered in essentially a layer of flood deposits, which, by the way, do not exist and are nowhere on the planet. We just don't see them, probably because there was no great flood. But anyway, but you have other problems too. Um, as scientists, we rely on observations and experimentation to explain things. And we deduce theories, which obviously come from our human minds. And scientists don't have all the answers, nor are we always right. And we don't claim to have all the answers, unlike creationists. And it's very funny how they have to invoke, like, oceans in the air and stuff like this in order to explain a great flood. But they claim to have a literal interpretation of the Bible. But I don't remember reading anything in the Bible about oceans in the air. But anyway, they see things like rocks sticking out of the ground, like this cross-section. There's a surface, and so there's fossils here. They see this and go, oh, wow, this block's several kilometers in volume. How, how did it get there? Oh, the only way to do that is to have water come through and push it. Well, number one, problem with that is if you have a block like this, water pushing it, the amount of pressure and flow velocity would be so great you'd break this up. It would shatter. You wouldn't have kilometer blocks. It just doesn't work that way. I mean, physics doesn't allow for it. Now, Poof, I guess we could magically change the laws of physics, but um, it's amazing how much has to be changed in order for the flood theory to work. But what they don't tell you, and probably don't even realize since they're not scientists, is that these units continue under the earth. Folded, probably through faulting, by mountain building events, plate tectonics, okay? And these units have over time been folded by pressure of rock, which can bend things like this,